I felt we were at war. There was a war to be won, and I think there's no room for part-timers. It was all or nothing. I can only think it was, uh, you know, the working class escape, you know, uh, if you can't be a footballer, you're, you know, trying to be a musician, that kind of thing. Some way of getting off the, you know, out of the nine to five, uh, learn an instrument, uh, form a band at some point, uh, write songs. I don't think it was an ideology, just try and be like you hear. Where we come from, there's nothing. There's nothing in East London. Um, if you weren't in the gangs, or you couldn't play football or boxing, you've got music. I don't think any of us, even in our wildest dreams, thought it would ever become the way it was. You know what I mean? We were just all happy to play. It helped hard rock, heavy rock, heavy metal. It just gave it an extra boost at a time when it had been pretty much dormant and pretty much ignored. New Wave of British Heavy Metal was heavy metal's own punk in a way. It's creative. It's not just a marketing ploy. It's a boot time. People in bands, the ones that really are worthwhile talking about, they feed off of that. And that's why you have these kind of, these periods in time where it just goes boom. At the tail end of the 1960s, popular music began to get louder. Along with tracks like the Beatles' Helter Skelter and the Stones' Jumping Jack Flash, which pumped up the volume and the distortion of the rhythm guitars, fresh acts were appearing who focused on this new, heavier sound. Guitar gods such as Hendrix and Clapton pushed their instruments to the forefront, showcasing their virtuoso ability whilst moving further away from the dominant sounds of pop. It was after the emergence of the new hard rock bands, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, and in particular Black Sabbath, however, that a new phrase began to circulate, heavy metal. And although this would slowly seep into the common musical vocabulary, where it emerged from and what exactly it defines remains to this day enigmatic. The first use of the term heavy metal, this, I mean, it, this, the whole thing is sort of shrouded in myth um, and, and no one's got a definitive answer. I mean, I've actually read, I've read music texts that sort of describe the birds even as being sort of heavy metal, which, I mean, sounds absolutely preposterous. Steppenwolf had heavy metal thunder in the lyrics to Born to be Wild, which, I mean, that's, that is so obviously a sort of uh, a reference to sort of uh, an automotive reference rather than a sonic reference, but it's still a reference. I like smoking lightning. Every metal thunder Racing with the wind And the feeling that I'm under I kind of like that. No one ever knows where it came from sort of thing. When I first heard the phrase heavy metal, I kind of liked it. I, I guess I was a bit unsure as to what it meant. Um, I, I, I kind of figured that, well, maybe it's like high energy rock. I need someone to show me was a heaviness that, that Black Sabbath were so very successful in developing as a unique aspect of their sound and what they did. And others, of course, got heavier and followed suit. But at the time, with no one ever hearing it before, we, I had no way of knowing what actually they meant by that. Well, Black Sabbath are kind of looked down as, I mean, these days, as sort of like, you know, the first band. They weren't. They weren't at all. They were just part of a huge group. But, I mean, I think with the name and just the way sort of history has treated them, they become the archetype, as it were. And, you know, if you want to look around for something to sort of pinpoint heavy metal, Sabbath are, are, are not just as good. They're probably better than most. But there are a lot of other bands around doing the same sort of thing that don't get mentioned, like Sir Lord Baltimore, a perfect example, Leafhound. You can't underestimate the impact of Led Zeppelin and probably 
even more so than Black Sabbath. Um, even though, you know, Robert Plant is quite vociferous in his sort of rebuttal of the term. <laughs> creative period of music on the tail end of that enormous boom that was inspired by the likes of Sgt Pepper and Pet Sounds albums that sort of broke the mould. Suddenly people realised they could do whatever they want and the music industry was set up thus that it allowed them to. And that's where you get, you know, basically heavy metal came from. And throughout the first half of the decade, Zeppelin, Sabbath and Deep Purple went from strength to strength in a musically diverse climate that saw their heavy rock coexisting with both the extravagance of glam and the excesses of prog. By 1975, however, things were changing, with all these bands broadening their sound and incorporating new elements into their music. I think by 75, the likes of Zeppelin, Sabbath, Purple have been doing it all a long time. There was a lot of touring going on. Um, there was a lot more influences directly from America, as opposed to bringing in sort of 30s, 40s blues, um, and I think people were being heavily influenced by what was going on around them. Purple certainly were spending a lot more time in America, bringing in the likes of Glenn Hughes, who was big on the funk sound and big on Stevie Wonder, was bound to influence them. Most bands, five, six years down the line, are very, have got very little to do with what they were when they started. The mid-70s was a brilliant boom time for funk music. Earth, Wind and Fire, Mother's Finest, the early Commodores. Stevie Wonder, the best music Stevie Wonder ever made was in that period. You don't think that's going to have an effect on people who are at the top of their game musically. They're listening to this stuff and they think, oh, you know, a lot of hard rock fans sort of with a more sort of narrow-minded approach are kind of like, oh, no, no, can't have that. Richard Blackmore didn't like it, you know, and he was the essence of Deep Purple, he quit. Blackmore, who had been a founding member of Deep Purple, formed a new group, Rainbow, that distanced itself from this new experimentation and returned to a heavy rock sound. Other bands, too, were beginning to emerge that would also keep the hard rock flag flying, including Judas Priest, UFO, Thin Lizzy, Motorhead and the Australian outfit ACDC. Yet despite the fact that all these bands were collected in one genre, there was a striking variety in their musical approach. Thin Lizzy didn't sound anything like um, UFO. You know, possibly the two biggest sort of heavy rock bands that, that, that the UK came up with, in, or the British Isles came up with, you know, in the mid-70s. Thin Lizzy, Celtic folk music and loud guitar music, that's kind of where that one came from. UFO, Deep Purple and a sort of an even more melodic ear. That's kind of where they sort of come from. Motorhead, well, I mean, Lemmy's on record is saying all he wanted was a UK version of the MC5. And let's face it, if you actually really strip down everything Motorhead have ever done, it's not heavy metal. And Lemmy hates the term heavy metal. It's just rock and roll played very fast and very loud. That's all it is, you know. So it's just, again, it's, it's, it's a myriad of influences and it, different bits sort of influencing different bands. None of those bands that I've just mentioned sound like each other, and yet they're all lumped in under a banner of heavy metal. And although each of these hard rock bands would chart their own course throughout the 1970s, it was over the following five years in Britain that the